Welcome to part two of section one, getting started of our A to J author training course. In this video, we'll cover the basics of document assembly. What does document assembly mean at a high level? And how do you actually turn a paper form into an automated form? So what do we mean when we say document assembly? Document assembly is when user-friendly software gathers information from end users, puts that information in the correct blanks on the forms, and puts together all the necessary legal documents an end user needs to accomplish a task. Just to keep you on your toes, this process can also be called form automation, document automation, or building an expert system. There are two parts to a complete document assembly package, the interview and the template. The interview is what the user sees, the series of questions, information, and help that pop up along the way. The template is the backend tool that overlays the form with fillable fields that contain variables to capture and store a user's data and the logic or conditional statements that may alter that data or the output based on some condition the author creates. You need both parts to have a complete A to J guided interview. The first step in turning a paper form into an automated form is to gather the target form and identify all the blanks that an end user would need to complete. Take a highlighter, either a physical one if you have the paper form in front of you, or a digital one if you're using a PDF, and highlight all the blanks on the form that an end user could possibly need to complete. These blanks are going to be your fields and they will hold the variables that hold the user's data. When you upload that PDF into the A to J document assembly tool, AKA the A to J DAT, you will recreate that highlighting work by clicking on the blank lines and creating the fields. Now that you've identified all the fields you'll need in the template, you need to come up with the variables to put in those fields. The variables will store the user's data in the interview and be used to replace the blanks with that data at the point of assembling the document. I recommend establishing a naming convention for your variables early in your form automation journey. If you're a new author in an organization with an established document automation catalog, find out if your organization has a variable naming convention. If they don't, or your organization doesn't yet have automated forms, you get to create that naming convention policy. It is best practices to have all the variables in your automated forms following this naming convention so that answer files are able to be shared among interviews and future technology projects like e-filing or case management integration become easier with standardized variables. These variables are used in both the template and the interview. They are the bridge between the two components of a document assembly package and between the end user and the completed form. You take those variables and build questions around them. We'll cover more about how to technically do this inside A to J Author and how to build those questions specifically for self-represented litigants in section three of this course, focused on the interview creation. The user is presented with those questions in the interview. Whatever responses they type into those blanks on the screen are captured in the underlying variables. Those variables are stored in the A to J answer file. That answer file, the variables and their paired responses, is in a file format called ANX, which is a form of XML. When the end user gets to the end of the interview, they will click a button called something like Get My Document. At that point, A to J Author will send the user's answer file, that XML file of variables plus responses, to the server the interview and template are hosted on. That server will compile the answer file with the A to J template and replace the variables on the template with the user's responses. This is called assembling the document. In most cases, the final document is returned to the end user as a locally downloaded PDF. That is the high level overview of document assembly. Congratulations, you've completed another part of section one, getting started.